Yeah, hello. This is Palo Willi from Wild Design Studio. Today I'm going to demonstrate how to use the fillet command to make a simple boat knot. Uh, from our previous lesson, we learned how to use two red eye to fillet an object. And so today I'm going to demonstrate how to use that to create a simple object, very simple boat knot. So let's get into that. We create a circle. If you want the circle to be in the middle of this Y axis and then the X axis, you press zero, type zero and press enter. Then you will see that automatically it dumps the center of the circle at the middle of the X and Y axis. Okay. You can manually use your own radius or diameter. I'm okay with this one. So I'll press the mouse and then I'll go for polygon. So this icon here shows polygon. You click on it and we need six sizes. So, and I want it to be in the center of the X and Y as the intersection. So I press zero on the keyboard and it will automatically locate it there. You press enter and it's confirmed. And then you click. Now you can see that from the perspective view, we have this line. So now what you are going to do now is I'm going to the front view where I'm going to extrude these curves up. So we go to solid. You go to extrude planar curve, then you select straight. Then the command area says select curve to extrude. These curves are to be extruded. You press enter and then you drag up. Now I'm, I'm working from this front view. And then from the perspective view, we can see that the curves have now been extruded to a poly surface or a solid object. Now the, our next step, is to fillet the edges. Like I said, I've treated how to fillet objects in the previous lesson. If you have not watched it, subscribe to my channel and then you learn how to fillet with two radar or the same radius on an object. So let's let's continue. So now we are going to fillet these edges. So we go to solid, you go to fillet edge, and then you select fillet edge. Now what I'm going to do now is, this says select edges to fillet. I'm going to cross around all this, the objects, to select the objects. Uh, now the radius now is 0 0.5. I need one. So I'll cancel the command, and then I'll reactivate the command again by pressing enter or go into solid then select fillets and then fillet edge and then i'm going to change the, the radius now so the radius is 0 0.5 i'm going to make it one so i'll type one at the command area press enter to confirm then i'll cross select around this object now you can see that all the edges are now 0 point uh one one uh millimeter okay so now I press, uh, I'm going to deselect the middle circle because I don't want to fillet that now. So I'll hold down control and then you click on lines or curves that you don't want them to fillet. So I don't want these edges, the, the center edges to fillet. So you hold control and then you click on those lines one by one to deselect them from the selected edges. And then you press enter to confirm. Now that I've pressed enter to confirm, it is showing that these edges, the radius here is one millimeter and it's going to curve around the, the edges of these objects in uh, using the radius of one millimeter. So what I'm going to do is I want the, the middle here to have a different radius 
from this one so i'm going to make the middle portion to also fillets but it's going to have a different uh, radius in the middle so i'm going to have half of that of this 1.0 uh, sorry 1.0 yeah 1.0 radius to be 0 0.5 here so what i'll do is you will see at the command area it says add handle so you click on the add handle and it said the current radius for the next handle to to be added is 1.0 and we want 0.5 so what we do now is to type at the command area 0.5 or you type 0.5 you press enter to confirm that so what you do now is okay sorry let me let me do this again um 0.5 press enter and then you will see that now the next radius or the next radius to be added is 0 0.5 and make sure you activate mid from the on the old snap activate mid on the old snap so that it's going to uh, snap to the middle portion of the faces or the edges so I'll start locating or locating the middle portion and when you get to the middle it will automatically write mid for you that means you are the middle and so if you don't see mid you don't have to click so make sure that you see mid before you click sorry it's like I I made something here let me re do it again go to solid fillets and the radius should be one cross select and i'm going to you hold down control to deselect the middle line the middle circle the edges we don't want those edges to be filleted so we press enter to confirm then you go to the command area and then you say add handle the add handle click on the current radius which is one and type in 0 0.5 you press enter and then you activate mid on the old snap so when you bring the mouse to any uh to the faces or the edges where there is middle where it's it's automatically snapped to the middle you click on those mid areas as i'm doing so you follow my steps you follow my steps make sure you see end if you don't see end do not click or dump your anchor or your handle I'm going to take my time to finish this thing off so just follow what I'm doing and like I said if you see mid before you, you, you click now I'm done so what I will do is we press enter twice and now our boots the knots is actually coming to life let's move on now our next step is we are going to surface then you select chamfer surface chamfer surface your first surface to chamfer give it a distance of point three and press enter and then the second distance press seven uh point seven sorry type point seven and press enter again now you select the surfaces as i'm going to do now you select the first one this way and then you select on this one it will chamfer and then you do the same to the back by selecting the middle portion first and then the base so now you can see that it has chamfered the 
these two surfaces together. Okay, now our next step, we are going to create a point. We are going to create the ring. And you know every boat and nut has a particular ring in between. That is the ring we are going to create now. So watch carefully so you don't make a mistake. Let's move on. I'm going to switch my viewport. So I'm going to the front view. And what I'm going to do is that you go to the old snap, deactivate, deactivate the middle or the mid, and then activate center. Okay, now go to this point, you will see single point. Just click on it and then bring it to bring your mouse cursor to the this object here. Let's switch to the perspective view so we can see it clearly. So when we are getting to the middle portion here, it has to snap to the center of this object. If you are not getting the center, try as walking around this object for a few or moving the cat the mouse a pointer or the cursor around the object and you will see it snapping to the center the moment you see sent it means that it's at the center of this object you click and then you will see that automatically it will dump the circle or the, sorry the point at the middle of those of this object what we do is we switch to the front view where we can see it clearly and this is the point here and this is the the chamfer edge we want it to be on the chamfer edge and this line shows the chamfer edge what you do is to drag this object if the toggle of the screen is actually disturbing you deactivate the the grid snap click on it and it's off so you can have a smooth drag so you can drag it so i'm going to drag mine to the chamfer edge and so what we do next is that as the point is selected activate mid and deactivate send or center now go to mirror this object here click and hold or this toolbar here click and hold you will see mirror from the middle here or from the far extreme right there click on mirror since you have activated mid go to any any area because you want it to re, to mirror to the other side so from this side you will see mid click and drag in you will see that the point is not located at or it has been mirrored to the top cool now let's move on to the next step now we are going to create what you call helix or the ring we are going to create the ring in the boat knot so let's move on so we go to curve if you go to curve you will see helix from it click on helix then command area says start of axis or the first axis now i'm going to click on the point there so and it's not giving me that opportunity to click on the point we might make mistakes so what do we do we deactivate the mid click on point so that it will snap to the point so now you can see that the moment it reaches any point it shows that this is point so we click on the point and then from top then it said end of the axis to the next point we click and you will see that it's giving us some type form of what ring and this ring must end on the chamfer end must end at the chamfer end where the chamfer the middle uh, cylinder it has to end on it so what do we do now activate your grid snap so that it will help you to snap to the end so i'm going to activate the grid snap click on it and the number of 10 the number of 10s we have i'm using three you can use more than that but mostly boats not or the teeth of it are mostly our just some something few so i'm going to use three tens if you want to do more just click on the tens and then add type the number that you want it to be there and then if you can if you want to have ten tens or six tens whichever we are I'm using three okay cool let's move on i drag to the end of the chamfer and then you click now we have dumped the circle or the curve the helix which is the ring in the middle we don't need those points anymore 
So from the top viewport, I have cross select the points and then de delete them. Now our curve is in the, the center. What do we do next? Now let's follow me. From the front viewport, we are going to create another triangle. So we go to polygon, and in this case, we don't need six, we need three. So we need three to turn it to a triangle. We type three, press enter. Now we are going to activate end. We want it to touch the end of the line. So now follow me. Let's select end. Now we go to the end side of that line. When you see end, you click on end. Now you drag into the direction. So you can see that the grid snap is still not allowing us to drag properly. So what we do is to off the grid snap like this. Just click on it and it is off so that we can drag smoothly. Now that I'm dragging smoothly, make sure your triangle does not become so big to go out of your model. And so just look at what I'm doing. It's just at the tip of the model. You click and you are OK. Now what you do is select, hold control, hold control, um, hold shift, select the object and hold shift and add the line, this uh, helix to the selection. Now go to this icon here and select on isolate object. It will isolate the other objects for you. And so you can see that those objects are hidden. Cool. Now let's move on from here. Now double click on the the name front so that you get the other three views added today. So as you can see, our object is actually not, we don't want the center of the triangle to be there. We want the, the back or the middle of the triangle to touch the end of this tip of the, uh, the helix or the curve. So what do we do? We shift the object from there, activate mid, and then activate end. What do we do? Now we are going to do what to call move. This tool says move. Click on this tool, and then you hold the middle of the triangle. Click, and then drag to end. When it snaps to the end, you click, and you are okay. Now we have the triangle to be at the end of, or the tip of that helix. Cool. Now let's move on. I'm going to double click on the perspective to get the other viewports. We are going to do what to call this object, what to call a long pol polar along curve. So what you do next, go to transform. If you go to transform, you go to array, then you said along curve. Click on along curve. It says select object to array. The object to array is this triangle. You press enter. When you press enter, it says select the path. We want this object, a number of them, to be to flow around this object. So what do we do? We select the path again. This is the path. When you press the path, we need seven, or I need seven for this particular, depending on what you want to get, achieve. I want seven. And so when you select on, um, you, uh, you can change the numbers that you want here or type in the number. So I want seven numbers or number of items. I need seven. Then always check road like. When you select road like, then it will tell you to click on one, any viewports and always click on what the top. If you just click on the top, it's going to give you other, or it's going to replicate these objects seven times on this curve for you. This is the result of that. We don't want the top one. So what we do is to delete the top and the, the two edges, we are going to delete them like I have done. Cool. Now, what we are going to do now is that we are going to uh, sweep it using sweep one rail. 
sweep one rail. What is sweep one rail? Let's get into that. You get to understand it well. So now we go to surface. You will see sweep one rail. Click on sweep one rail. Then it says select rail curve. The curve on which these objects are going to run is the rail curve. Select the curve. It says select cross section. But at the command here, you see point. Don't select the. These are the cross sections. These are the teeth. These are going to be used to to make the teeth. But what we are going to do now is that we want the tip of this curve to be very pointed. So you select on point first. So after clicking on the point like that, and then you locate the end of the the the, the curve. You click on it. After clicking on it, now let me switch to the front view. After clicking on the end here, now I'm going to select these cross sections, but follow my steps. Do not change. Follow my steps. I'm going to click this first, come here, click on that, move to this side, and then I'll click on the last one. After clicking on the last one, do not click anything again. Go to point again, click on point, and then come and click on the last end of the curve. Just click on it and you will see automatically showing you that it's going to move in this direction as we have moved. Cool. I'm switching to the perspective view. Now I'm going to press enter. Press enter and then just click OK. Do not change anything. Just click OK. OK. And as you can see, this is what the result is going to be for us. So as you can see, those triangles are not be turned or have not been turned into the teeth of that boat's head or the nuts that we are creating. And so to bring back the boat or the head, you right click on this ball object. We say show object or hide object. And then you right click on it and then it will bring it back. And so this is how it's going to the whole show is going to look like but before that this object here i'm going to you hold this object click press it down you will see select curve just select the curves and it automatically select every curve on your screen press delete because you don't need them anymore if you want them you hide them you click on the bob and it hide them but i don't need them so they are off so this is how the knob or this screw head is actually made in Rhinoceros. Very, very simple. And so let me put it into render view. So we look at it very well. This is the outcome of our boat head. So we can do the boats itself and place it inside so that it looks like a screw, a boat, and not. Listen. Thanks so much for watching this tutorial. If you like this video, hit the like button and you subscribe to my channel at wild design studio thanks again see you again next week with another basics in rhinoceros bye